Dr. Matthew Butlin is the chair and chief executive of the South Australian Productivity Commission, the independent advisor to the SA government undertaking public inquiries and research for the government. Dr. Butlin previously held the role of the Red Tape Commissioner in Victoria, identifying regulatory inefficiencies and red tape. Dr. Butlin is a part-time senior associate at the ACIL Allen Consulting, the immediate past president and honorary fellow of the Economic Society of Australia, the chair of the advisory board of Melbourne's University's Institute of Applied Economic and Social Research, and an honorary enterprise professor at Melbourne Institute. Welcome. Thank you very much. Um, now, I just need to confirm that this is the gadget that... Right, thank yes. you. Look, I also would like to add my acknowledgement that we met on Ghana lands and also acknowledge their traditional leaders, past and present. Um, so you might have kind of got that I'm a bit of a, uh, an economics wonk. Um, in the, uh, I want to make four points in the, uh, in the next few minutes and then draw on a particularly formative uh, uh, experience working for a company then called CRA, now called Rio Tinto um, Limited, that thought very deeply about how you deal with a really powerful concept of what work is. And if you were in Rio at that time, it was drilled into you. Work is the exercise of discretion. It's not about effort. It's actually about the application of creativity in, uh, within limits, uh, but it essentially application of creativity. And that led, uh, in the, that particular experience led to me uh, learning two other very powerful questions. The first is when you're confronted with something that you want to set out to do is what is the work? Sounds simple, but it's extremely important that uh, you put enough time and effort into that. And then you answer the que or ask the question, well, how do we organise to do it? Which draws in a lot of things that, that have already cropped up in the conversation so far. So um, I'm going to start with a very predictable slide. I do work for a productivity commission after all. So. But look, the, um, the key point is that the productivity is, is the foundation of uh, rising living standards in the long run. Um, to set us in context, you'll see that small diagram um, on the right there. Um, the red line is the Australian uh, level of multi-factor productivity. Think of that as the uh, boiling down all the outputs and boiling down all the inputs. And it's the, essentially the trend is showing um, how uh, our capacity to uh, get more from less um, has been trending over time. The rather disappointing thing is that when you look at the yellow line, which is South Australia's, is that you see precious little difference over about 20 years. There are some fluctuations, it's true, but, um, the, uh, but the basic point is that uh, multi-factor productivity in South Australia has been flat. Um, while the causes may be deep-seated and long-standing, um, I, I, this is my third productivity commission. For seven years I ran the Victorian Competition Efficiency Commission and I was a, a briefly a, um, a commissioner in the Australian Productivity Commission and I was lured out of retirement by an irresistible opportunity here. Um, so, um, so let me assert that um, the answer to that question, um, is there something really special about South Australia, is probably not. I mean, we may start from a different point, but fundamentally the drivers are the same. So if the first point is productivity is really important, the next point is state policies and the state public sector really matter. Um, state governments have few but powerful policy instruments to lift productivity. Uh, this is my favourite five. You need to push it around a little to get it down onto one hand, but it's important for an economist to get it on one hand because, you know, so we say on the one hand this and then on the other <laughs> hand that. But I don't think it's a really forced compilation. Regulation, tax and transfers. In essence, looking at the, uh, at the in incentive and structure, the framework in which business operates, we create jobs and, uh, and we invest. The second area is critically important. Is it is essentially a state responsibility, although the Commonwealth does mix in there. And that is how we create human capital um, with our, our children, but then as a lifetime proposition. 
Infrastructure is critical. Um, one of the things I learned a long time ago in doing, a, um, uh, doing a, uh, an inquiry in Victoria was just how important shaping cities as complex infrastructure for growth and livability actually is, and that's already a recurring theme here. The fifth one there is the, co the combination of innovation, research and entrepreneurship, which is one of the fundamental drivers of um, uh, in technical progress. In a larger sense, these are main, largely medium-term strategies. I mean, you need to develop them over time and you're always adapting them. But um, the, uh, the benefit, in my view, tends to be the consistency and clarity of the purpose and, and following that through. And then we turn to the point that's already been raised, that the, the uh, public sector in SA is a very large chunk of the economy. It follows from that that our efficiency and productivity matters directly for SA's productivity. Um, the, the, the other thought I'd throw in, also drawn from a, a, another life experience, is that innovation improvement tend to come in small, medium and large sizes and how you organise to do those things is really very important. At a very concrete level, you can look at the, the work of uh, Deming, particularly in total quality and continuous improvement and the capacity to unlock um, uh, the uh, discretionary contribution as a, as, a, as a method, a system for getting the uh, very rapid but small uh, change compared with some of the really fundamental breakthrough. You need to think in all those things. So the question for me, um, and one that we try to address in our inquiries, is how do we organise in the public sector to hunt improvement and innovative solutions? It's not look for, identify, we're actually trying to hunt improvement because at the end of the day, that's what drives productivity. Now, in my view, having bumped around this for a long time and thought about it, uh, is that uh, innovation's not a silver bullet. I, I don't want to say, in my world, I tend to think of, to get things done, you need to think of several ne necessary conditions applying it uh, simultaneously. But uh, that doesn't, uh, but it is, in my view, extremely important and at the centre of uh, achieving more value for, uh, for South Australia. We have, in our first year, completed what's in effect, or at least on Friday, when I hand in my, my, my next uh, final resort to my, uh, report to my boss, the Premier. I've completed three um, inquiries, uh, two in procurement and one in local government cost structures. Um, the, the recurring themes that particularly come out of the um, uh, the procurement area uh, about opportunities uh, um, go to what we procure. Um, importantly, another theme, engaging with the market, stakeholders, being very clear on uh, the need. How we procure, where instead of going to one-step processes, uh, deliberately stepping back where we think it's appropriate, um, to two-step processes where we actually take the time do a bit of testing, engage with uh, alternative suppliers and find other solutions. Um, there have been in the inquiry a number of very interesting examples, for ex uh, including uh, what Health does um, in, uh, in uh, looking at different ways of delivering services. I think it was in the emergency departments, if I remember correctly. Managing independence is critical. Um, the point has already been made uh, the, um, that uh, most, most of these problems we deal with, uh, you need to rely on other people. You're building on uh, building uh, complex or potentially quite complex solutions. And learning to be able to do that um, is really important. Now, this other, the next one, the clarify boundaries, is, uh, in my view, one of the most important steps of leadership, making clear, uh, look, these, this is the wicked problem that we're dealing with. It might be this big or that big and I want you to go and play in that space, and I want you to do, take some risks, but please don't do things over here. That's not actually very helpful to what we're trying to do. Um, uh, uh, the next one is, again, something that's been mentioned, but as I look at the, uh, the disincentives for calculated risk-taking, they're quite significant and they're quite asymmetric. And uh, part of the work of leadership is to create better boundaries that actually insulate um, the capacity to take those decisions. 
Um, I think, uh, particularly dealing specifically with the procurement profession, I think we can uh, invest quite a lot more in expertise in, uh, in public uh, sectors and mobilise it. Um, and obviously, well, I'm, I, run a public, uh, I run a productivity commission, data and evidence is really critical. Um, use evidence-based approaches, including data analytics. Um, in, the, uh, in the work we did, um, okay, I can do that, but this is two minutes to go. Um, uh, we have some stunning examples of innovative procurement and many opportunities to do better. So my fourth, fourth point is organising better to be innovative. Um, there's some themes here. They draw on a piece of work that I did some years ago with Rod Carnegie um, for the Business Council, but looking at the, um, the innovating enterprise. And uh, I throw a few out there, and perhaps we can, I'm sure some of them will be picked up in the, in the later conversation. But leadership is essential. Leadership sets direction, expectations, and enables, encourages, and protects staff. Behaviorally, Align. I, when, when my, in my consulting, I have a term called a logic bomb, and it's the logic of the necessary condition. So when you're looking for a solution, think out far. Think about the characteristics it has to, uh, it has to uh, achieve. Um, and then if, they, if what's coming out doesn't achieve that, uh, that, uh, that, that outcome, then the logic destroys it. And that's a, that's a way of thinking about this. Uh, um, the, um, uh, the second point is engage constantly with stakeholders, peers and the evidence. Um, the third is explore, don't prejudge or preempt. And my experience has been that uh, very often strategies emerge adaptively, that you, as you learn and gather more information, things change. For us, um, process, uh, for us at the SAPC, process is really important. We have to integrate the creative view about, well, as we've got a particular task to do for the, uh, for the state, we want to be creative and we have to deliver. So being able to deliver that is actually a, a real, uh, real point. Skills, build uh, and use expertise and insight. I believe that the state can do a good deal better by developing uh, professions uh, families of professions and expertise, not only in, um, not only in procurement but in other areas. Um, and uh, deliberately use structure to share what works and what problems are interesting. And by the way, I am hinting amongst, amongst other things at uh, using communities of practice um, and use them quite actively. Um, reduce disincentives to sensible authorised risk taking. And importantly, learn how to work in teams. My, uh, another big lesson coming out of uh, uh, CRA Rio Tinto was a company that had imprinted deeply in its DNA how you go about doing wor working in teams. Now, they, they chose a particular model for teams, but having that technology and to be able to deploy it right across an organisation was enormously helpful, particularly in an organisation that did quite a lot of project work, work as well as um, its own work. Now, I've, that, I'll finish on this slide. This is a very small advertisement. Um, uh, basically, uh, what we do is uh, inquiries. Our purpose was already mentioned. We have four part-time commissioners, very part-time commissioners, 13 staff, and uh, various people who um, the, uh, the rules allow me to go and press gang from time to time. Thank you very much.